Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan. So I meant to like put out a video today that was the uh, Lisa Goes Outside vlog from last week with the Veg Food Fest and my trip to LA, but it turns out there's a lot of footage, like a lot of footage, and I don't know how to edit all of it in a way that isn't just a bunch of clips smashed together. So I'm trying to figure out a way to like splice things together in a cohesive manner that actually tells like the story and not just like a bunch of like here are all the things that I did. So that's coming to you shortly. And today I just want to rec like record a video that's like a little bit more chill. Me just talking to you, hanging out because it's late. This video is a lot easier to edit than that kind of video. And I just, I just want to hang with you guys. And I feel like I should cover this one topic that kind of comes up and confuses people, I guess, sometimes. So you guys know that I'm Vietnamese. I like tell you guys every single video. And that's like something that is like really frustrating sometimes when people question my identity. So I've had in my uh, The Problem With Asian Food uh, video, someone said to me that like, I appropriate the culture of Vietnam for my videos, for views or whatever. And I was like, excuse me? Are you saying that I'm not Vietnamese because I speak English? Or like, I don't know, like I don't know exactly what they were trying to say. And like, when I look at the comments, it for some reason got pushed all the way down to the bottom even though it was like one of the more recent comments that are there and I actually posted like a pretty thorough like rebuttal um, to all of their points uh, and so this person said that like I appropriated Vietnamese culture for this channel and I was just kind of like offended because like that questions my identity like how who are you to say that I'm not Vietnamese I grew up I'm Vietnamese, like my genes are like 100% Vietnamese. Both of my parents are Vietnamese, they came over from Vietnam to Canada and I grew up in a Vietnamese home. I speak Vietnamese, not super well, but I speak it and I understand it for the most part. And it was just like really frustrating when people question my identity. They're like, oh, you're so white or oh, you're so like Asian. I don't... <laughs> Guys. I'm both Vietnamese and I'm Canadian. Like that is the reason why my logo is part maple leaf and part Southern Vietnamese flag. Um, and if you guys don't know what the Southern Vietnamese flag is, like TLDR, the current Vietnamese flag is a communist flag and my family fought for the non-communist side. So this was the Vietnamese flag before the commies won and took over Vietnam. Uh, so that's why it's yellow with three red stripes. I just find it like really interesting that like people have ever questioned or have challenged my identity as like a person. I feel like I'm not the only children, like child of immigrants that was kind of in this like weird gray area between their like ethnic culture or like their culture fr from their parents, like their genetic culture and the culture that they were raised in. And so like I grew up in a pretty white town um, with like 15,000 people. It's in like cottage country in Ontario. There, like, there was not a lot of culture. I think I was like one of three Vietnamese families in the entire town, and I don't even think there was like anyone who wasn't white there, aside from us. Um, so I got made fun of on the regular, but I still grew up with Canadians. Like, I had friends, and we went to birthday parties where we eat pizza and like ice cream cake, and we have presents and stuff like that. But then at the same time, because I grew up in a Vietnamese home, I missed out on a lot of like cultural references that I never understood before. So like Eddie and I will sometimes come across like a saying that I don't know the meaning or like an idiom um, that I don't know the meaning behind because I grew up in a Vietnamese home where my parents didn't speak English as a first language. Like I consider like English my mother or like my native tongue i don't even know how to explain it like my l1 that's like my first language but it's not technically my first language it's just my l1 and i don't know if that all makes sense to anybody because that's a pretty translation specific term even with english as my l1 i don't understand a lot of concepts and a lot of idioms because i didn't grow up in a canadian home um likewise vietnamese is also my l2 vietnamese is not like my strongest language but it is my culture that i identify with in terms of like my the structure of like my family my values my way of like my perspective of the world if that makes any sense so like i will always be a child of an immigrant i will always like know life growing up in poverty and like trying to make things work or like tr not 
you know, like I find Western culture is very consumerist and like if something is broken, you just get a new one. Whereas like my family kind of grew up in the way that like, oh, it's broken, like just keep using it until it's like actually broken or like find ways to fix it or, you know, live without it. And like that wasn't really always the case because a lot of times what would happen was my mom would get my hand-me-down <laughs> and she would buy me the new thing. I mean, I'm sure lots of mothers do this, but that's like what my mother did and that's how I identified as a Vietnamese person because it was a lot about sacrifice. And so like all the people who were boat refugees who came over here from Vietnam or like came over to North America or any any like developed country outside of uh, Vietnam, like they sacrificed their living, the, the, the luxuries of their life and their privilege in order for the next generation to like survive in a better world, if that makes any sense. There was an episode of Master of None where a season sorry like really like showed the sacrifice that immigrants had given for their children and like the little acknowledgement that the children would give. They just wanted to like spend time with their kids or like they just want to be like, oh, I don't understand how to use this email. Can you help me with the iPad or something? And like the son was kind of like, oh yeah, I would. I just, uh, I gotta go catch a movie. So I'll just talk to you later. And then like, it's like the most entitled of like not appreciating and not understanding the sacrifice that your parents have given. And like my mom never really rubbed it in my face to be like, oh, I left the country for you. And I had to like live in the slums for a couple years before I came to Canada. The only reason why I know any of that stuff is because I asked my mom specifically, like what was it like to be a refugee, because I didn't know. And I feel like a lot of kids don't know that, who are children of immigrants. And I think it's so important to understand the sacrifice that your family has gone through in order to come here. And it's not just people who are like Vietnamese who like came from war, but like any, like any immigrant. Basically what I'm saying is that there are a lot of aspects of Vietnamese culture that are embedded in my values as well as Canadian culture that is embedded in my values and it kind of like is hurtful when people challenge me to be like oh you're Lisa you're you're so whitewashed or like Lisa you're so Asian like I never felt like I belong and I still don't feel like I belong I feel like I'm still in this like weird cultural limbo where I like I have one foot in both cultures but never fully immersed in one or the other and I don't want to lose either culture like obviously I'm never going to be able to fully immerse myself in Vietnamese culture because I'm not gonna marry someone who's Vietnamese and I'm not gonna be living in Vietnam, so I'm not gonna have that sort of life. But at the same time, I fully intend to like be with Eddie for hopefully the rest of my life. But the like, my even if I didn't end up with Eddie, like I would probably, like I lean toward Canadians. Like those are typically the people that I end up dating because like my values and like, like, like I'm, I'm a hardcore feminist, I'm, vegan, I'm pretty left and it's like a lot of a lot of Vietnamese men that I've met do not appreciate those qualities in a woman. So I will I feel like I will always have to like fight to retain as much of my Vietnamese culture as I can because my partner will always probably be outside of Vietnamese culture and as a result my children will be half Vietnamese, half Canadian probably or like Eddie's like a bunch of things as many Canadians are. That was a very jumbled collection of thoughts about identity, but like I like I feel like I'm not the only one. Like there must be lots of you guys who are in the same sort of boat when it comes to culture and like not feeling completely 100% Canadian or 100% whatever your family's culture is from or whatever. Um, and I think it's really interesting because I don't feel like people talk about it as much. When I was growing up, the like the whole thing about growing up when you're a kid is that you don't want to be different. Whereas nowadays, like people celebrate their differences. They're like, oh, it's so cool that like your culture is like whatever, or, like you have such traditions or like blah, 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 blah. Like now people celebrate those sorts of things. And when you're growing up as a kid, like I wanted to blend in as much as possible. I feel so weird. And it's like something that like I'm still learning like every day about how to recognize and celebrate my culture when I've grown up being accustomed to suppressing it. So anyway, this was a very long-winded video. Um, I will have probably a food video for Wednesday. I tend to be post like food things on Wednesdays and then like other outside lifestyle-y talk things on Saturdays. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys have experienced when it comes to this or like 
you know, this whole sort of thing. I'm really sorry that I'm like super tired and this is probably not the most coherent video. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys like these kind of talks because this is something that I want to talk about more often. Like I have like a list of things that I want to talk about like why am I not a skinny vegan? Is my job vegan? How, how can I date someone who isn't vegan? How am I vegan if I consume palm oil or if I have clothes that are not fair trade and sustainable? And then I also want to talk about like relationships because I feel like all of my life, I've been in three re serious relationships in the past eight years and there is very little time in between each one and like not because I'm like loose or like because I'm whatever, like even if I was like who the f, f cares but I've always kind of leaned towards being in a relationship and I think that because of that a lot of people have asked me questions about relationships and like a lot of times I'm like I don't really know but I guess now after eight years of like different relationships and different experiences and like reflecting on them a lot I guess I do know a lot about relationships um, and maybe I can impart some sort of helpful knowledge to anyone who wants to you know have a navigate relationships I don't know anyway so those are some of the topics that I've written down that I probably want to talk about um, and I probably and I know that I need to cover a po like a video about feminism and like my stance on feminism and like explain to people like the different waves of feminism because I don't think people realize because I feel like nowadays this is I'm this is a tangent this is gonna be a different video anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm so sorry it's long-winded and I hope that it's not like when I edit this it's not gonna be like a horrible show um, yeah thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around for this long-winded video and if you guys have any questions uh for me and eddie uh for our q a type relationshipy type thing or whatever you want to ask us leave them in the comments below there was another video where i had that so i i know that there are other questions there so hopefully we'll address all those um in that video with that said thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys have a delicious day bye